Monday after lunch, and we are on our after lunch walk in <laughs> Dean and the boys are having snowball fights. The boys are convinced they're brave enough not to move while Dean throws snowballs at them. I'm digging. What are you doing? Digging. You're, you're not. You're practicing digging holes so you're ready when gardening comes around. Okay, so what are you doing? You're just slicing the ground and then you're hitting it with a shovel. I do have to mow, so I did say don't dig holes all over the place. You're right. So I have to, I have to put a crack in the hole and you, then fix it. So you're putting a crack on the ground and then you're just smacking it with the back of the shovel to put it back together, huh? Is that working well for you? Yeah? Oh, good job, Ez. All right, Charlie's getting excited. <laughs> He's at that age where everything is exciting and he wants to bite and jump and be in the middle of all of it. Just do that. Hey guys, it's Monday evening and Dean just took the boys um, out for piano this evening. And I have a few things that are on my to-do list to do before he gets back tonight. Um, one of which is make dinner, but I'll probably get to that as the very last thing that I get around to. Um, so while he's gone, I got my Mountain Rose Herbs shipment. Um, a f maybe three or four, maybe five videos ago, I did a restocking my herbal apothecary video. And I ordered some herbs at the end of that video for Mountain Rose Herbs. And I got these herbs probably two weeks ago, but I'm just now getting around to putting them in the apothecary, get them out of the box, put them in the apothecary. Anyway, Mountain Rose Herbs is normally much faster at shipping, but I think with all of the COVID things going on, shipping is slow or they're very busy, maybe both. Anyway, so I just got my box two weeks ago and I'm just now getting around to taking everything out of here and putting it in my apothecary. So I've got to do that tonight and I'll show you guys um, a quick kind of thing as I do that. Um, I also have some Valentine's Day dresses that I want to show you all. Um, I think several videos ago, I can't remember how long, I did um, a video about homeschool updates, um, some books that we were using this year, and I talked about getting some dresses for Valentine's Day, and I was going to show you guys. Well, I didn't like any of the dresses. Um, one was like super red and red does not really look good on me. There were two others that were kind of like a maroonish color that looked nice. One of them was too casual. It was like a knit type material and it would be like a really great dress for fall, but it was not really a Valentine's Day dress. And then, oh, the other one looked really good. I liked the, I liked the cut of it and the style. It was kind of like a wrap, sort of like an A-line dress, and those tend to look better on my body shape. Um, but it was too long. Um, I am short, and so I need dresses to come either above my knee or right at my knee, and this dress came below my knee, and so it looked like there was a lot of dress and very little legs. So it made me look even shorter, and it was just like, I know that I'm not keeping any of these three. I'm just gonna send them all back, um, and then I'm gonna order some more dresses. So it wasn't even worth showing you guys, but, I did get some dresses. Um, I think I've ordered like four more dresses since then. Two of them are packaged up and ready to go back because I didn't like them. Another dress um, that I ordered again was below my knee and I really just need to like write down what the length is that is like the longest length the dress can be for me. And that way I don't order one that says it's longer than that. So anyway, this is the second dress that I bought that was too long, I should just write that down. But anyway, I do have two dresses here. I wanna show you these dresses um, and the shoes that I bought to go along with them and like the tights and leggings and all that stuff. So I'll flip the camera around in just a second and show you those. One is for like a Valentine's dinner at our church and then one will be for our Valentine's Day date, I'm thinking. So I still have to try all of this on together, but I'm just gonna show you these two. I'd love to hear in the comments below which one is your favorite. Um, again, I am gonna try them on and see what I think it looks like on me. Um, I have two pairs of shoes. I'm not sure which one is going to go with which dress. But anyway, so I've got to do that tonight. Um, so herbs, do that. I've got to make dinner. Again, that'll be last. And then I'm going to, I've got my hair all pulled up on top of my head. Um, I'm going to do like um, like a coconut oil 
hair treatment, like a hot oil hair treatment. So basically what I do is I just scoop out coconut oil that I cook with and I put it in a pan and melt it and let it cool down just a little bit and then I'll just kind of smear it all through my hair and wrap my hair back up like it is and I will let it sit on my hair while I take a bath, listen to a podcast or watch some vlogs or maybe even read or it just depends on what I want to do um, while that coconut oil, that hot oil soaks into my hair um, and then I will shampoo and wash my hair out um, and let my hair dry and I'll go make dinner. So anyway, that that's my plans for Monday. Um, I am gonna throw in some clips after this from last week. I did different some different videos the last couple of weeks, not my normal like daily vlog videos, but I do wanna throw in some clips of Dean finishing up our living room fireplace, like bookshelf kind of um, area and show you guys what that looks like because I have not put that on YouTube yet. Um, I may also later this week show you a little bit of what how I decorated and styled the shelves. And I hate to kind of say that because it's not I've not really I've not really styled them yet. I did go shopping last Saturday um, for some antiques and I found some things and I put them on the shelves, but they're the shelves, the shelves, but they are not um, like permanent and I don't have everything. So again, I'm just kind of like throwing things on there just to see what I think and what I what I like. Um, but it's probably not gonna say that way. I will continue to shop around and buy things that I see that I think would be a good fit. And then I'll probably restyle them differently um, as, as I buy more things. I'll probably just kind of continue to move stuff around in there. But I do wanna throw those clips in just so I have it on um, a vlog of all of the updates for that living room because that area is done. Right, yeah, it's totally done except for the crown molding. And I, I think I say that in the video. And again, like you can see in all of our house, we don't have our crown molding up yet. I really wanna get that done this year because I feel like every room looks unfinished. And um, we've got a good bit of the baseboard in, in the rooms uh, throughout the house, not all of it down. Um, but I'm like, we just, we keep, we keep doing these really big projects. And that one is like, we save that one for rainy days and we just kind of keep putting it off. So anyway, it's one of those things where I just feel like we need to get it done because I feel like all of the rooms just look weird to me when I see them. I'm like, oh, I need some crown molding so that it looks finished. Um, okay, so let me flip the camera around, show you these outfits. I'm gonna lay them out in my bed, I think, and I'll show you guys. And again, um, maybe I'll keep both of them. I'm hoping I keep both of them. I hope they both, I tried the dresses on. I know the dresses look good. I just need to make sure they look good with the shoes with them. Um, but I'd like to know what your thoughts are um, I don't really wear dresses a lot. I used to wear dresses all the time. And then I just kind of got to wear, like, I was more comfortable in jeans or shorts or whatever, and I just didn't wear dresses all that much. So I don't have a ton of, like, dresses for certain occasions, so it's kind of been fun shopping for dresses. Um, these are all from Amazon. Um, I can link to them in the description box below if you're curious about them. Um, I have tried Amazon... I think what is it called Amazon wardrobe and Amazon's personal shopper I wasn't too like impressed with the personal shopper thing I think I kept one dress from that and I still haven't worn it I still haven't yeah worn it it's in my closet with tags on it I need to sell it because it's too big it doesn't fit I don't know what I was thinking when I tried it on it doesn't fit um, anyway but I do think if I had stuck with it, then it would have gotten better. But anyway, I just prefer to shop for myself on Amazon. I love that you can do free returns and if you don't like something, you can return it. I did recently download the Poshmark app. It's kind of, to me, like thread up, although I'm sure it's different. I just, I'm not that used to it. Um, it may be nicer clothes, which I know thread up has like a luxury and designer section. Um, and I think maybe on Poshmark you can shop people's closets like if you like their style you just follow them and as they want to sell stuff you can buy their things I don't know again I've looked at it just a tiny bit um, but I have not really had any luck buying thrifted clothes online um, especially like with thread up you can order things and try it on if it doesn't work you can send it back but you get a credit to thread up and I just don't shop on there all that often I kind of like this stuff with Amazon because I can order it, try it on. If I don't like it, I can ship it back and I get the money refunded to my credit card. Now, if you do Prime Wardrobe, I think they don't bill you until you decide to keep it. It's like seven days. You have seven days to ship it back. I don't know. I just order it and then get refunded. 
Um, but I have tried the Prime Wardrobe thing too, where you can try it on for seven days. Anyway, um, I like doing that. I, in my effort to be a little bit more sustainable, earth friendly, I do get buying used clothes. I do shop at like local used places. I love thrift stores and I love, um, oh, we've got like a Play-Doh's closet here. We've got a thing called Hut 8. We've got some like places like that where you can go and consign your clothes and buy them and I do do that but see I can try them on in the store versus like doing it online when I can't try it on and I have to send it back for store credit and I can't get my money back oh I don't know I just it's just not really worked out for me maybe Poshmark is different again I need to like look into that a little bit more and I can figure that out um but for now I'm buying new clothes and I will sell them I will consign them if I end up not wearing them much but normally I like wear my clothes out. I am normally not a person who wears things like five times and then I sell it. I wear my clothes a lot. Um, that's just me. I don't know. I do feel like a lot of people like go through clothes a lot more than I do. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I buy new things and I wear them until they like need to be recycled in some other way but not to be worn in some other way because they're usually like either stained or worn out or they just don't they're not fitting the way they used to be when they were newer um so yeah so I'm okay buying new clothes because I will wear them and I will get my money's worth out of them um and I try not to buy cheap stuff so that it actually does last me a long time I have learned that lesson as well. Anyway, I will stop chit chatting and I will flip this camera around and show you guys my dresses so you can see what you, you can see them and you can tell me which ones you think um, you like better. Like the shoes look good with this dress, these boots look okay with this one. Anyway, you can just tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Okay, so here is the first dress. Um, it's long sleeved as well. Let me move the shoe here and it has a little bit of a cinch to the wrist and then it flares out right here so you can pull this up and wear it almost like a three-quarter length so it kind of makes this upper part of the arm scrunched up and it comes to three-quarter of the length of your arm or you can just wear it all the way down on your wrist and it'll be long sleeved um it has like a wrap style piece that comes across the front and it's got this little almost like a ruffle at the bottom and then this ruffle that comes up the wrap and it ties right here which I don't have it tied right now um, and it's got a little cinched waist, so it's tight at the waist as well. And then I have some sheer black hose to wear with this one. And I have a pair of Mary Janes with the straps. And then I have a pair of these like stilettos with the cutouts on the side. I really like these. Um, and I'm going to try both of these shoes on with this dress to see which one looks best. This will be the dress that I would wear to our church's Valentine's Day dinner. I'm thinking... Oh, I don't really know. I really like these shoes, but here's the problem. I wear a size seven. These are a size seven, but because they're stilettos and they're tall, they look a little too big on my foot. Like my, they stick out a little bit in the back. Um, I don't know if that's normal for stilettos, but I'm afraid if I ordered a six and a half, it wouldn't fit. And I don't really know that I have time to switch those. Anyway, these Mary Janes are suede and they feel really good and they are a seven and they fit perfectly. But I'm thinking if I put these on with the tights, they're really gonna slip off when I try to walk because they're already a little too big looking, like with no tights on. And anyway, I'm just gonna try it all on and see what I think. But I think this dress is not as fancy as the other one, but it's still a nice dress. So I think it's a better fit for our church's Valentine's Day dinner. And then when Dee and I go on our date to our fancy restaurant, I'll wear the other dress with the knee length boots and dark black hose and all that stuff. So anyway, I'll try this on too. And maybe if I don't forget to let you guys see a little video or a photo or something of me in that, um, I'll put it up here in the video as well. And we'll see what this looks like together and which shoes work best. Okay. So here is the second dress with boots, tights, and a belt. Um, the color is like a maroon, but I'm sure it's not coming through on the camera because my light is on in my room and that's going to make it look funny, but it has a cinched waist. Well, a fitted waist, not a cinched waist. It's got a fitted waist and I bought this leather belt to go on it right in the center. It looks really cute on with the belt. It has like scalloped thing here on the arms and the wrists, and then it's got this cutout so you can actually see through it. 
all along the bottom and it's like a really flared kind of piece to the bottom so it's really pretty on I like it a lot um, I do have some black opaque tights to wear with it and then I bought these shoes um, my I used to have boots like knee-high boots and they wore out like I was just saying <laughs> I wore them until they were like okay we gotta throw these away because they don't look good anymore um, so this is the first pair that I have bought since then um, these have more of a stiletto heel and a pointed toe um, and I think they'll look good with the black opaque tights and then the belt I think that'll just look like a really cute snazzy outfit so anyway this is the one that I'm thinking I'm gonna wear on our Valentine's date to Cafe Lola with some of our friends so I'll try that on later and see what I think and if I if I don't forget I'll try to video me in the dress um, and let you guys see it okay so here we are with um, my herb cabinets that I keep all of my single dried herbs in and I have my box for mountain rose herbs here so I'm just gonna kind of go through and show you guys what I got. They were out of stock on something. I can't remember what it was. It may have been my nettle leaf, but I have some nettle. Like I found, I found this bag, this box that um, Herbal Academy sent me back when I worked for them. They sent me one of their um, deluxe herbal kits that they sold. They sold some, I can't remember what they called them. One was like, a basics and one was a deluxe and it had different amounts of herbs and recipes and herbal monographs and things like that anyway they sent me one when I worked for them and I found it when we were cleaning out the garage so I have all of these extra little herb bags and I've already kind of added what um, I have like in stock like in my glass jars and if they were really if the jar was really full then I just kept the bag so like I have this I have this quart size jar of nettle but I also have this bag of nettle and I think because nettle is a nutritive herb and I drink a lot of it in infusions then I go through it quite a bit and I feel like I ordered a bunch of it from Mountain Rose Herbs so that may be the one that they're out of stock I'm not sure I can't remember I know they sent me an email and they said when it gets in stock they'll ship it and if it's gonna be like way too long and they don't know when it'll be back in stock they'll just refund my money so we'll see um, I also got some golden sill root because I do not have any. Um, I do have some golden sill leaf, but I bought some golden sill root. So that will go over here with all the G's. Um, I do need to make a tincture out of that because I think I have like the tiniest amount of golden sill root tincture. And that from Mountain Rose Herbs is like a cultivated variety, so it's not like a wild variety. I did get some astragalus slices. Now, I have a bunch of astragalus root already in here. It's just chopped up differently. The slices I like to use in bone broth and soups and things like that because they're easier to find and pull out, whereas if you have the little tiny chunks of astragalus root, then you have to put those in like a little muslin drawstring bag and use those, so I will put that up in there. I also bought some red root. I have been learning a lot about this herb um, in my studies with the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. And so it's something that I wanted to get and get some experience with. Um, I will definitely make a tincture out of this. I think this is a tincture herb. Um, it's a root, so most roots are going to need alcohol to extract their, extract their properties. So this one is for a tincture for me to work with a little bit and get to know better. So I have to actually get a new jar and make a label for that and put that in here at some point. Okay, so I also bought some milk thistle seed powder. I usually take milk thistle capsules and I thought this time I would give a go making capsules myself instead of buying them to save a little bit of money um, because this is just something that I like to do for just general liver health, like liver support. Um, it's um, really a really great way to protect your liver and since our livers do a lot of work detoxing all of the things that come into our body, it's really great. This is just one of the like tonic type herbs that I like to take all the time. Um, I actually don't take it year round, but I kind of fluctuate with it. Anyway, I was getting ready to order some more capsules and I was like, just, just order the powder when I was placing this order and I'm gonna make my own capsules because I have a ton of capsules. And I have a capsule machine, so it's really, fairly quick, um, so I'm gonna try to give that a go, so I will actually leave that out. Um, ooh, throwing bags of herbs everywhere. I got some holy basil leaf. I love, 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 love holy basil. This is in a lot of my teas that I drink and um, infusions. I got some more red raspberry leaf because I'm out. This is a really great one for infusions as well. 
running low on skull caps, so I ordered some of that. I love this in tincture form. This is really great for like headaches and nervous tension, um, if bracing thoughts if you can't sleep at night because you're thinking of too much. This stuff works really well for that. I also got some milky oat tops. I'm gonna make a tincture out of this. This is great for nervous system support. This, these herbs do a lot of different things that I'm just kind of giving you like the main, big main thing. Linden, Linden is another one that I love to put in teas. It's a great like nervine relaxant, just kind of like a peaceful kind of herb. I love that stuff. Um, now here's another one I'm not too familiar with. I mean, I know about it, but I haven't used it. Calamus root, this is one to tincture. Um, so this is one that I ordered that I'm gonna try to use a little bit and get familiar with it, kind of get some experience with that one. Mugwort, this one is great for, um, you can tincture it, you can put it in like herbal dream pillows and stick it in your pillow and sleep next to it. Um, and it's like the, uh, the aromatics, you smell them. Um, and you can also drink it in tea, it's a little bit bitter, so I prefer it in um, like a tincture, but this is a really great um, plant to drink, to, to use that way in like a tincture, or like the dream pillows are fun. Um, all right, so I also got some more hibiscus flower because I'm running really low on that. I was actually just looking at that today and I saw how low I was. Got some more chaparral leaf because I'm running low on that and I love, love some chaparral. Um, I got some blue vervain also. This is a great bitter and it's great for, um, yeah, your like digestive and liver health. It's also kind of like a nervine, so it's like a calming, relaxing sort of bitter. It's cooling, I think it's cooling. Anyway, this is great for my constitution and I've never used it. So I'm gonna make a tincture out of this. Um, and again, get some experience. I think when I did that last video where I was showing you guys, I was cleaning this closet out or this cabinet out and I was telling you what I was um, thinking about ordering. There were a lot of things that I wanted to order to get some experience with because I'm learning about them in my studies and I have not tried them. So that's what a lot of this is. I don't know um, how I personally react to these things or how I would use them. I'm just gonna start figuring it out, studying the plant a little bit more and then studying it myself. Um, my Art of Simpling course is coming up. It will launch in late May and if you're interested, if you're already an herbalist or you wanna like progress in your herbal studies or become like push yourself more towards that intermediate herbalist, um, the, I can't even talk, the intermediate herbalist, um, I would really recommend you taking this course. It's a wonderful course. It's all about how to study and spend time with and get to know one plant and we do it over the course of 30 days. So it's really easy and you can just repeat the process with every new plant. And that is one of the best ways to become a better herbalist because you have to know your plants and know you don't have to know every single plant out there under the sun. That's kind of impossible. Um, it's really good to have like your allies, so, like no, start with like one plant. You could even spend two months with that plant if you want it, but just start with one and learn all there is to know about that. There's a very strategic way to learn about a plant and I talk about that in this course. Um, and then you just kind of go with the next plant and then you go with another one after you've studied that and you use them and um, we go through how to make things with uh, the herb that you're studying. You get to pick the herb you're studying. It's a really fun course. Anyway, I will be sharing more about it in my newsletter. So in the description box below, you can sign up to join my newsletter list. It's called Letters to Natural Mamas and I send out an email every two weeks and I will be talking about that course as it's getting ready to launch. Um, and if you're on my newsletter list, you get a discount to the course, so that's another perk. Anyway, ashwagandha powder. This is another one that I take, not year round, but I take it um, kind of like the milk thistle. Um, this is a great like adaptogen. It's just a really great tonic for overall health and this is a great one for my constitution. So I'm gonna make some pills, some little herbal capsules out of that because I normally buy capsules but I wanted to save a little bit of money. Got some chamomile to refresh my chamomile. You can see it's running low and so I have like a fresh new bag and oh, it looks so good and bright yellow. These are still looking pretty good. But anyway, so I bought some of that because I need to refresh that. I got some California poppy. Now, I've never used California poppy. Again, this is um, a great Nervine sedative herb. Um, I am excited to use this and see how I feel about it. But lots of herbalist friends like it and I've not used it, so here we are. Um, this is some Bone Set. This is great. I use this for really achy fevers and I tend to get really achy in my joints when I get sick and I have a fever. Um, and I'm running out of bone set. I think I have like a tiny little bag of it left when I did that last video. So I bought some more of that. That'll be a really good one to have. 
and alfalfa leaf because you can't have too much alfalfa because this is a nutritive and I drink a lot of this in um, my infusions, especially come spring. I'm gonna be doing lots of infusions. I put it in my smoothies. I drink that stuff throughout the day and alfalfa leaf is like a highly nutritious herb. Um, definitely wanna get it organic because it can be a big GMO crop. So anyway, I got a bunch of that. This is a one pound bag of the alfalfa. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm probably going to have to find like a gallon jar to put this in because I think the jar that I have for my alfalfa is a little one. Anyway, I'm going to get busy putting all of this stuff away. Um, I'm going to have to get new jars, make new labels, do that sort of thing. But I'm going to get this stuff put up and then I'm going to do the coconut oil in my hair. And then I'm going to maybe pour myself a glass of wine, take a bath, let my hair soak, enjoy some fun podcast or something like that. Anyway. Hope you guys are having a good Monday night too. What are you up to tonight? This is what I'm up to. This is the things I get to when I'm not doing all the stuff with my kids <laughs> throughout the day. So anyway. Okay, so now I am going to put all of this oil in my hair, which I actually already put it up here in my hair, which is why it looks really greasy and gross right now because it is oily because <laughs> I just put a bunch of oil in there. Um, but I'm gonna put the coconut oil in my hair. Um, Right now we're in my bathroom, so I'm sorry for the weird lighting. This bathroom has not been remodeled yet, and our tub is in the boys' bathroom. And eventually this bathroom will be remodeled, and we'll have a tub, and I'll just have my bath and everything in here. But all of my stuff's in here, so I'm going to show you what I'm doing and what I'm using. This is a hair and scalp oil by Lark and Owl Naturals. She is on Etsy, and she has her own website. I love, love, love her dry shampoo. I use it whenever I need dry shampoo. I use it. Um, she also had, she used to have this pure and revitalizing hair and scalp oil. I don't think she sells this anymore, but y'all, it smells so, so good. Anyway, what I do is like when my hair's all kind of like pulled up and twisted into like a bun, like it was earlier. Sorry, it's all falling down. This has like a dropper top. Ooh, I'm dripping oil everywhere. And I just kind of stick it in my hair like this and I rub it through the top of my hair and all around the sides and I squeeze the oil out onto my scalp. So like directly on my scalp. Then I take my hair down and I just kind of like rub it around all over the place. And I really want to work that oil like into my scalp and into the top of my hair. So it makes your hair all greasy, but that's okay because you're really doing something good for your hair. Um, so it's just like healthy oils and essential oils in that. Now, I have my coconut oil. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's all melted and I'm just gonna rub that through the length of my hair and then I'm gonna pull it all back up, tie it up with my little claw thing here and go take a bath and let it just sit in my hair and then I'll wash it out. Now, the shampoo and conditioner that I use, I got this off Amazon and again, I'll link to it in the description box below. Sorry, my hair looks so weird, I cannot. It's just weird. Anyway, it's okay, y'all y'all know what I'm saying. Um, it's this top six essential oil herbal shampoo and conditioner. I got this on Amazon. It has a really great ingredients. It's like such a good shampoo. It smells good. It keeps my scalp like really clean. I just got the essential oils in it. It doesn't suds or foam up. That's the only thing, but it doesn't have the chemicals in it that make, you know, your shampoos suds up and foam. But if you get your hair really wet in the shower and then you put the, the shampoo in and you rub it into the wet part of your hair, it will kind of suds up a little bit, but it's not gonna be like really soapy. But anyway, this stuff works really well and it'll wash all of this oil out of your hair. So I'm just gonna start putting this in. I'm just kind of like dripping it on my hands. You can actually just take coconut oil straight from the bottle. Like you can just dig your hand in there and like rub it together and then rub it in your hair. So this is gonna make my hair all slick and greasy. And hopefully really help any dead ends. Now, if you have colored hair, like if you color your hair, um, which I don't color my hair at all, it has natural highlights from the sun, but I have not colored my hair. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I mean, it's been, it has been so long. I don't think I've colored my hair since I've been married and that's been almost 16 years, so yeah been a long time. Um, if you have colored hair though, this is really good for it because that can, um, you know, it's kind of can be tough on your hair, especially bleach, like it's drying to your hair. So you can see my hair is getting really greasy. Um, let me flip over to this side though. And so the coconut oil can be really great on your hair. I 
think I'm dripping it. I think I may be getting more on the counter than I'm getting in my hair, you guys. You could put this in a bag and squeeze it in your hair. Like, you know, like, or you could put it in like one of those um, dropper tops and put it in your hair too. Okay, I think I'm missing the back though because I feel like my hair's still dry back here. Um, anyway, this has cooled down enough. It's still warm, but it's cooled down enough for me to like rub it with my hands into my hair. Yeah, oh, this is good. Now it's getting really greasy looking and feeling. Okay, you don't want to put so much grease in it that's like dripping out though. That's not really, you just want it to kind of coat the, to coat the hair and sit in there. Okay, that feels good. That's nice and greasy. Yuck, nice and oily. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is if I can look at you guys or look in the mirror. Oh, I'm getting it all over my skin. And, you know, if you have any extra, any extra coconut oil, you can put some like essential oils in there and you can rub that all over your skin. You can pour it in your warm bath water, but just be very careful if you're in the bath and you put oil in your bath water. That's a really great way to add essential oils to your bath is like just put the essential oils in the leftover. See, I'm just going to like pop this claw up in here. So now my hair's got all this grease in it. Um, anyway, what I was saying is you can take the leftover. Now I've got hair hanging down on my face. Anyway. You can take the leftover oil and you can like rub it on your skin or you can put some drops of essential oil into this oil and then pour it in your hot bath and that'll help disperse the essential oils into the bath water. But you wanna be very careful if you're, at, if you're in the bath um, because you don't wanna slip and fall. But you can kind of like rub that all over your body while you're in the bath and it's just so good for your skin. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put some essential oils in there, something that's really relaxing. Um, and I'm gonna take my shampoo and my conditioner and let this sit on my hair probably maybe 30 minutes. That's, that's probably good enough, 30 minutes. And then um, I will wash it out and I will come and probably blow dry my hair because it's getting late and I don't want to sleep with my hair wet. So I'll probably blow dry it and it'll be good. My hair will be nice and soft and I will have to have that oil treatment on my hair. And all those essential oils that were in the scalp oil, it's gonna be really good on my scalp, so yeah. Self-care night, people. Hey guys, so I just finished my bath and I just blow dried my hair. I didn't curl it, um, so it's really straight. But yeah, it feels really good. It's super soft, it's shiny. Like obviously I know the light's shining on it because we have these really bright lights in our kitchen. Um, but it feels really good. And I am hoping that all of that coconut oil and you know, oil and essential oils in my scalp, all that stuff was really good for my hair. Um, and will help it to be stronger and maybe not break as easily and just kind of protect it and do all that good stuff. Anyway, I am getting ready to make some spaghetti carbonara for dinner and some veggies. Um, so yeah, I Dean will be home, let's see, it's 7.40, so he'll be home around 8 to 8.15 with groceries. We'll put those away, have some dinner, get the boys ready for bed and all that good stuff. So anyway, I, um, I love spaghetti carbonara, so I'm really excited about tonight's dinner. It's been a while since I've made that. Um, it's gonna be a while. Yeah, actually, I'm not gonna tell you guys that yet. Um, I'm eating all of the bacon and meat that I can eat in the next week, I guess. Week or so, a little bit, like week and a half. Um, if you read my blog, um, or you followed me on Instagram for the past year, year and a half, you'll kind of have an idea of what's coming up, but I will tell you guys more about that next week, probably. Um, yeah, next week, probably, about why I'm eating all the meat I can this week. Um, so anyway, um, I hope you guys are having a good night. I hope you did something nice, self-care-ish for yourself this week. Um, I, like I said earlier, sorry, my hair's stuck to my fingers. Like I said earlier, um, I will throw in some clips of the family room or the sitting room, sorry, sitting room, family room's over there, sitting room over here and Dean finishing up our fireplace and the shelves. And hopefully I'll share some more later this week. I'm not really sure what all we're getting up to um, later on this week. It'll probably just be, you know, daily things that, um, you know, like our normal week. So I'll share some of that stuff if we get up to it. But anyway, if I don't, then I hope you guys have a good night. And if I do, then I'll see you in a little while. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so this is the mantle with the polyurethane on. It's a water-based matte
polyurethane, is that right, Hub? Uh, it's actually not. It is a, it's a satin polyurethane, but I didn't use the water base. Oh, you didn't use a water base? No. Okay. Sorry. Well, we used a water base for our floors, and I thought we were going to use the same one for this, but the satin, okay. It looks really good, and it like brought out the grain. There's the shelves. And there's the shelves. So you had to piece two boards together, glue them, and they're what, 11 inches long? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then he rounded all the corners, so they're not super sharp, but they're still square. Let's see. Yeah. My hand's in the way. All right. So is that, that, I guess that's cut to length and everything. And there are the other ones over here. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. Very good. We are in Dean's dad's wood shop. It's got all kinds of wood toys over here. <laughs> and it's gotten a lot of use from us in our houses over the years, isn't it? Yeah, You're becoming a, a woodworker, huh? <laughs> With all the stuff. I have you doing. Okay, that looks good. I'm excited to see that up. So, are they ready to be hung? No, they need another coat of polyurethane. Okay. The shelves all need to be done on the side that they're sitting on right now. Oh, gotcha. So, I just noticed this one's got some runs, so we want to get sanded a little bit. Okay. So, what is the ETA on? I put them on Saturday. Okay, I see. All right. So, that'll be down Saturday. You can hang the shelves and I'll go shopping and I'll <laughs> fill the shelves. <laughs> They'd look really stupid empty. So That's true, they would. Effort, yeah. That's right. You do your part and I'll do mine. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, they're looking good and I'm really happy with them. Thank you very much. Okay, so today Dean is putting shelves and he got the mantle up. And it's looking really good. I'm very happy with it. We put our candlesticks beside of the mirror, but I'll probably rearrange that and add some more decor there. And I have to find lots of stuff for the shelves, books, pictures, vases, all kinds of stuff like that. Anyway, Dean's doing the last shelf. And then we'll put the final shelf on. So what we tried to do is leave the bottom spaces a little larger. Um, than the spaces above there because the plan is to have some sort of like tin or basket or box of some sort um, and then we'll put wood or something something larger like on these bottom spaces here anyway how's it going for you good it is going yeah, the last one so it's good as long as the boys don't use them for lighter. <laughs> oh, I can see a hide and seek. Which you know. <laughs> I can see Isaiah. I can see Isaiah. Isaiah ended up on top of the cabinets in the kitchen. Yeah, he did do that. <laughs> Hopefully. We, we need to probably go ahead and say no climbing on the shelves at all. Okay. Well, anyway, it's looking really good. Um, again, those are walnut slabs. They're what, an inch and a half, did you say? Yeah. They started a little over two inches, and he planed them down. And I'll show you guys this from the side. So there's sticking off about that much from the side. So yeah, this now, if I back up, so the living room's a mess because we moved everything out from over there, so you'll have to ignore all that. But when you walk in from the entryway, that's what it looks like. So it's nice, I'm very happy with it, and now we just have to find stuff for the shelves and get a fire in there. <laughs> okay, so I also wanted to show you guys a close-up of the brackets, what they look like. We have to screw the shelves to the brackets because we haven't done that yet, but I think they look really nice. Um, yeah, they're antique brass, and I will link to them in the description box below if you want to check them out. Oh, one thing that we did want to show you guys, which Dean was just telling my parents who came over for lunch about this, <laughs> um, the tape in the corners, you can see it's starting to separate and kind of pucker up there on the sides. And then right here at the top, if I can get the lighting right, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can kind of see, yeah, there it goes, that the nails are popping through. So what's happened, which we didn't expect this, was that um, after we had a couple of fires in the stove, it kind of shrunk 
the mud around them so everything kind of pulled and the tape's doing it on the side of there. So we either have to add more mud, resand, paint again, or cover it up. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna end up doing, but if you are sheetrocking around a faux fireplace with a wood stove in it, then keep that in mind because you need to do lots of mud. Or right? wainscoting. Or wainscoting, yeah. Well, done. It may, I may just cover the whole wainscoting anyway. So the, um, the bee board that we have all over the house, you just do that and then we would, you could paint it um, a color like, or we would just leave it cream probably. But anyway, yes, we have, we have the bee board around the edge of a lot of rooms in our house. So that would have worked really well there. And if it bothers us enough and we decide to do that, then we may change that. So no sheetrock. But anyway, just keep that in mind if that's something you're thinking about doing in your home. But I'm happy with it. It looks good. Yep. Hey friends, so I'm just on here to wrap up last week's vlog and then get ready to start this week's vlog. Um, I wanted to say thank you for stopping by and watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. Um, I did want to also say that I didn't do a whole lot of recording over the weekend. Our church's like youth group had its big Valentine's Day dinner fundraiser and we were so busy all day Saturday getting that ready. That went really well. Um, it was really successful. We raised, we raised a lot of money for a new C students like building gathering place kind of thing. Um, so that's really encouraging. And then on Sunday it was Valentine's Day and Dean and I um, were able to get all dressed up and we went out to dinner with two other couple friends of ours um, from church. We went to Cafe Lola in Johnson City, Tennessee and we ate and the food was delicious and the wine was like perfect to go with food. It was just really fun. Um, anyway, so that's just a really fun yearly tradition that we do every year on Valentine's Day and um, it was just really fun this year. So anyway, I just wanted to come on and tell you guys why I didn't record very much over the weekend. And I'm going to throw in a video or not a video. I'm going to throw in a photo clip of us at Cafe Lola eating just so you guys can see a little bit of that, um, here at the end of this video. And, um, again, just to come on and wrap this video up and to say thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in next week's vlog. Bye.